So the first step is to download the images from the EB after your flight. So first you plug in the battery and then insert the cable as shown here next to the camera. And then you remove the SD card from the camera as so. We'll go to eMotion 3 software. Type in the project name, hit next. The drone flight log is available. We'll find that drone. It'll be a SFBBX. Select that and then select the file. I've already loaded it, so you just hit next. And then you import the images. And then you'll just hit next. I usually delete the original files after importing. Now after all these files are imported, you just hit finish, finish. And then you'll go find that folder. Now, from there we go to Pix4D. This is already finished, but I'll just show you the process. So you'll go to New Project in Pix4D. Then you'll type in the name. Do Add Images. You'll find that folder where those images were saved to. In my case, they were right here. So I'll just do Control A, select all, open those, and do next. So this all looks good. There's geolocation here. Just hit next. Now here you want to change the coordinate system to whatever you're using for the project. In this case we're using Iowa South and AD83. Hit next. Now I'll hit the finish. So here you can see the photos on the site. I'm going to go to processing options. Now initial processing I'll usually go on full image scale. You can do rapid if it's going to be a quick check in the field. In this case this is an aerial grid a corridor. If I'm not going in a grid, if I'm taking oblique photos in there too with the quadcopter I'll do the free flight and calibration everything is, is checked. If you're flying in a field, open area where everything's looking similar, I would just hit that geometrically verified matching strategy. For this point cloud and mesh, we'll do image scale, one half, optimal, and then for minimum number of matches, I'll, I'll use six, which will make a cleaner point cloud. Classify point cloud, export as LAS file. We can generate a 3D mesh if we need. We, we don't usually use those. And then for DSM, sometimes we want these, sometimes we don't. In this case, I'm going to turn off DSM since we won't be needing that. We'll just keep the ortho mosaic. And resources, uh, these should be set to full automatically. Send email notification. So at this point, we'll go to processing and we'll hit the start button. Now I've already processed this, so I'm not going to press it again, but I'll show you how this works 
right here. So this this is a data set that's already been processed. Now the first thing we do after we finish initial processing, so I, I should say that at this point when you process, turn these two options off and only do initial processing. The reason is that we have these GCPs, ground control points, and we need to match those in the Ray Cloud. So in order to import those, you go to Project GCP Manager, and then what we're going to do, import GCPs, and then you'll browse, and it should be in a text or CSV file. So I just get these from the survey team, just import those directly in. Then you'll need to figure out what order they're in. If you get a message saying that these are far away from your project coordinates, probably the northing and easting are flipped around, either that or possibly you're using a different coordinate system. So once you have those imported, then you're going to use the Ray Cloud Editor. That will pop up this right here. So here we can see there's eight GCPs. So these have already been matched, but if I was starting from the beginning, I would I would zoom out and I can I can click on this image to find that GCP. And you'll be able to sometimes you have to hunt around for it a little bit, but it should be it should be close to this this blue dot is where it estimates that the GCP is going to be. So when you first put these images in, that GCP blue dot is going to be over here or you know, around here somewhere, but you'll be able to find this target. Click on two targets and then you hit automatic marking. Then you should be able to look in these images and just verify that these are all in the correct location in the center of the target that we placed. And that's then you hit apply, go on to the next one and the next one until you're finished. Then at that point you will uncheck initial processing. No, I'm sorry, you will do rematch and optimize. That will run this process over again, initial processing, and it will match the cameras to their adjusted position because this GPS isn't always uh, truly accurate, so it's just an estimation of the position, so it will give a more precise position and it will have you will have a geolocation for these points. You can see the location right here. These are all now at the correct elevation and northing and easting relative to these checkpoints. And you can see it's it's pretty close. It's going to give you a quality report. There's when you when you process there's there's a lot of information in here. The important data to know is the ground sampling distance. So you should make sure that that is within your project parameters. And then I usually check for this data set. If you have more than about 90% images enabled, you should be fine. It will have a, they say 95%. They have descriptions of what all of this means. And then the next thing that I'll, I'll look at is this geolocation details. What is the error here? And you can set some of these points as checkpoints as well. I did not in this example. But if you want to do that, you just go to this GCP, click on the GCP object in the Layers tab, then change the type to Checkpoint. And then that will become uh, a checkpoint that will can be used to verify the accuracy of these points. Now at this point, we have a classified point cloud. So with this point cloud enabled. I've turned 
vegetation off. So you can see there's there's some noise in here, some vegetation that we don't want. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn those off so that I'm only left with ground surface and road surface. Usually road surface contains enough of the ground that I'll just keep that in there. I'll go to hit the layer tab, point clouds, densified point clouds. Then I'll right click on this, click export point cloud. Uh, yeah. So I will only select ground and road surface and you can select the folder to save it in. Now I have a classified point cloud of the ground surface.